Greetings YouTube, it's my Kaylee 7 here. Uh, recently I put out a video where I put the bike on the center stand and I got no end of criticism from the uh, experts on all things everything. So apparently I'm an idiot. Anyway, I have uh, listened to one guy's novel length diatribe on how to do this and so I tried it and yeah, it works. So let me show you how I'm going to do the uh, center stand from now on. Here we go. First things first, I'm gonna put my left foot on the center stand. Not my right foot. I'm gonna use my knee and the grab rail and a little bit of handlebar just for, for stability, not to push, because everybody knows how sensitive these handlebars are. And I'm going to push the bike until I feel the center stand on the other side. There we go. So right now, I have used mostly my knee and the grab rail to move the bike onto the full center stand now I'm going to move the bike back onto the center stand so that it's completely on the center stand. Here we go. Using the grab rail mostly and using my left foot to push down. I'm not going to really pull on the handlebar because I know you guys don't like that. Here we go. There. Now, it's on the center stand. Okay, now, let's take it off the center stand. Apparently, I didn't realize that even on my tippy toes I could still do it while straddling the bike. So we're gonna get comments now about my trash. Very trash you do. <sighs> okay. So now, I'm straddling the bike on the center stand. I'm going to put my hands on the handlebars and I'm going to ready myself on the brake, although I don't really need to, but my hands are ready just in case anything weird happens. And now, I'm going to rock backwards and then forwards. Here we go. Ta-da! And the moment the bike hits the ground, I have the brake, so doesn't roll too far. Don't forget to put the kickstand down again. I always double tap it with my foot to make sure it's down. And I always watch as I put it down. And there you go. So that is the expert way, apparently, of getting the bike up on the center stand and down off the center stand. So there you go. Experts on everything. You probably cannot see very well with this GoPro camera, but the bike is filthy. 200 miles in the rain, 43 degrees, I think it was, 42, 43, got down as low as 39 at one point. I had a great time. All right, now, let me show you experts how you can start the bike. There are two ways you can start it. Got to have your fob on you, of course, and your fob's got to be on. <sighs> but once you do have those two things, fob on you and fob turned on, you can turn the knob, and then that'll, turn. you know, get the uh, accessory, whatever thing, ready to prime. And then you just push this button one time, gunk, and it starts. Or, if you don't want to go through the rigmarole going, turn, push, you just pull the brake in, hold this button down, and there you go. Maybe the experts have an even easier way to do it. All you have to do is make sweet love to the bike, and then it'll just turn on the moment you walk in the room. 
47 degrees Fahrenheit and 15,980 miles on the odometer. Today is January the 4th, 2021. I hope you guys had a good new year. I did. Very relaxing. You gotta try this drink. My Uncle George, he uh, introduced me to this drink a few years back. It's uh, it's called cinnamon, cinnamon bun or cinnamon roll. Cinnamon something. Uh, you take uh, cream soda and you mix it with fireball whiskey. You know that cinnamon fireball whiskey? How strong you want to make it is up to you. And then you put whipped cream on top, from, you know, from the can, whipped cream, and you sprinkle some cinnamon on top. Very, very nice little way of uh, rigging in the new year. My goodness, that was nice. <clears throat> As you can see, it's a kind of a cold gray day today. But, you know, it's January, so you're not looking for palm trees and blue skies, right? So today's the first day back at work for me. And uh, I've got to do a lot of placement testing for new students. I'm the only one working today in my department. Everybody else comes back tomorrow. But uh, my philosophy is try to get as many students tested so that they can register. And that way I don't have to cancel classes for low enrollment. Teachers have jobs. Students have an education. And all is right with the world. That's my idea. It's going to be a long and frustrating day. It's Monday, of course, so why not? So, I don't know if you guys watched the Dick Clark New Year thing. I know he's dead, but they still call it that. Uh, basically, it's the one in Times Square. So, I watched not the, the programming involved, because I'm on on uh, YouTube when I'm watching this stuff now. So, it's just basically the, the, the raw live feed. And uh, they only had like 100 people in, in Times Square. And apparently they were all first responders. So uh, it was very quiet. It's the, the freakiest New Year I've ever seen. And that's how I rang in the New Year. Basically just sitting on my sofa, watching a very quiet live feed from uh, Times Square. You could hear the, the ticking of the clock, which I didn't realize that they have that. Apparently the clock ticks. So you hear tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock. But usually you don't hear it because it's so loud with all the people. It's very wet and suspicious on this road today. So I'm going to be more careful than usual. Yeah, I see the sand again. <laughs> At least you see some scenery. I take this longer way just to show you some scenery. 
it's not quite my typical ride to work. So uh, let me do a shout out to Moto Mengi. I was watching his video this morning on Moto Vloggers and th people thinking about quitting YouTube. And uh, I don't know if you know this, I've been doing it for, oh god no, how many years? 14 years I think. I started in 2007. I got my first account in 2006, but I didn't actually put a video out until 2007. So uh, I've been doing this for 14 years, and uh, I do it as a hobby. Back when I started, there was no uh, partnership or ad revenue, none of that. You just put videos on there because you felt like it. And they, they were not uh, stellar videos either. The technology was pretty basic back then. I still get people uh, trolling my old video saying, look at the video quality, this is terrible video quality. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's 2007, 2008. <laughs> you, you think you're gonna get 4K video from a 2008 video? I don't think so, you dummy. So uh, Mankey was talking about how some people burn out and they don't wanna do it anymore. He's not one of them, he wants to keep going because He's kind of new at this still, and he's got lots of ideas, which is great. But uh, some people, you know, if they put out too many videos and they they depend on this as an income, I think it starts to wear on them. Anybody remember Triple X Deadhead? He was doing real well, and then uh, kind of burned out. Got a drone, got into video games. I know he went back to grad school. And he had his family and all that. I get it. I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying that's that's kind of the pattern. Someone gets into it, they get really into it. They make a ton of videos. They go places, and uh, it becomes this big thing. And then it kind of peters out for a lot of people. There are some who you know go long term, like uh, Mordeth 13. I think he goes by M13 now. I think he's still making videos. I haven't checked in a while. He's the very first moto vlogger that I have ever heard of. If you know of somebody who was making videos before he was, you let me know, experts. <laughs> and uh, Cycle Cruza, he's not as old as M13, but he's been out there a while now, and he's still making videos. A lot of people don't like him. I, I don't have a problem with them. And then, of course, you have the old uh, traditional moto vloggers like me doing, uh, you know, your basic video. Nothing fancy. Like uh, the Smyrna Cowboy. Uh, you don't really see Suburban Rider out there making videos anymore. But maybe you'll see him again. I don't know. And then the really, you know, beginning ones, the ones that were before me, uh, some of them are gone now, like Bilma. Actually, Bilma and I, we started basically the same time. But uh, Bilma made moto vlogs way before I started. And uh, he's, he's gone now, unfortunately, rest his soul. Then there was uh, Sven Gali, Stephen Love in England. He's gone. A real shame. And then others just kind of stopped, like Ashfoot. Anybody remember her? Or um, DJ Sipster Four Breaks. I think he's a doctor now, or, P or a, ph a physician's assistant, or something like that. And of course, 808 YouTube is still out there. She still does a video now and again. Aloha. Then you had uh, 88 Hawaii, another aloha for you. I'm trying to do the shaka with my, my gloved 
tired hand. Not really working. So there, there were quite a few in the early days. There was a guy named Loud Pipes, uh, Cliff, I think his name was. I don't know what ever happened to Cliff. Oh, Itchy Mochi. There's a, he's one of the originals. He started around the same time I did. He doesn't really make moto videos so much. He makes videos about motorcycles. But he's been out there a long time. So as I head into 2021, I feel the same as I've always felt about making motorcycle videos and moto vlogs. It's fun. Some people really love it, and some people don't. If you're not into the technical stuff, then it won't be as fun for you. But if you like learning new programs and experimenting with different cameras and sound systems and this and that, it can be fun. And the, uh, the rewards you get for it far outweigh the, the efforts you put into it, at least in my opinion. I've met so many great people, Bronco Ride, Moose 3971, Harley Trek, Harley Day Rider, Bodine 52, um, The Bearded Biker, Christopher David Lawson, uh, Freedom Rider, let's see who else, Happy Jack, I love Happy Jack, he's funny as hell. He's from Peabody, Massachusetts. <laughs> Sam Smith, another great moto vlogger. Uh, NC Stoney, another great one. And they're still making videos. And because of the Goldwing, I've made a lot more friends in the Goldwing community, so I've expanded my reach apparently. I lost a few Harley people. Somebody made a good comment this morning on one of my videos about brand brand uh, tribalism. Saying that uh, in England, I think the guy was in England, they didn't have it as bad or th at all. Like here, you know. The Harley Riders don't talk to anybody else but Harley Riders and that kind of thing. He says they don't have that over there. I don't know. Do you guys have that over there in England? Do you have that weird brand tribalism where you pull up on a Honda... And the Harley guy says, do you get a real bike? Or you pull up on a Harley and, and a Honda guy says, <laughs> that bike is ancient slow. People don't really say that to each other face to face so much. It's, it's more online, I've noticed. Then again, I don't really face to face with people a lot. I did have one guy once years ago on my Road King. I parked and this, this guy comes comes up and he says, hey... Nice bike. I'm like, thanks. Is that from 1950? I'm like, no, it's it's actually a 2005 Road King Classic. It's got fuel injection and in cruise control. Oh, that's cool. But it, it just felt like he was he was coming at from the angle of I want to make fun of you for your ancient looking bike. <laughs> Can I just keep going? I just want to keep going. Just don't take that right turn. Just go straight all the way until I reach wherever. Just an idea for you here. I'm thinking about a couple of trips for this year. Assuming I get the uh, vaccine, which I'm going to get. I don't think it's going to make me grow horns or put a uh, RFID chip or whatever they call that radio frequency chip in there I, come on anyway once I feel like I'm not going to die from the COVIDs I'd like to go 
uh, I want to do the whole Blue Ridge Parkway from Virginia all the way down to the south of North Carolina. I want to ride some of the roads down in, in southern North Carolina uh, and on the Georgia border, South Carolina Georgia border. So I got those kind of figured out I want to do and, and then of course the uh, the double nickel road in Ohio. So we'll see. All right, it's Mike Kaylee7. Stay safe out there. Talk to you later.